We got a lot going on last week. There was a lot of misinformation circulating on social media, along with the accusations that the Biden administration was not going to honor its support to HBCUs uh, by cutting the original forty five billion dollars in funding down to two billion. Uh, these are big numbers. So uh, we definitely got to get that right. So joining us this morning to clear it all up. Is President Biden's senior advisor and director of the White House Office of Public Engagement, uh, Mr. Cedric Richmond, uh, who is also an HBCU graduate himself from Morehouse College. Uh, welcome back to the show, uh, Cedric, man. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Oh, thank you for having me. Man, it's always a, uh, a pleasure to have you on. Uh, and we all know how important funding for our HBCUs and why people are upset after hearing that funding may have been uh, cut. Uh, please explain what happened and why there was such confusion around this. Well, part of it is just pure information and people who feed on it. You know, those saying that good news travels fast. Uh, the truth is misinformation travels the fastest. But uh, so here's where we are. The president, when he came out with his ambitious agenda, he gave a number of about $40 billion for higher education, half of which he wanted to dedicate to HBCUs over 10 years, over the next 10 years, so that they can enhance their facilities, like their science labs and all of those things. But in the meantime, and in the meantime, we gave HBCUs $4.2 billion this year. So when you see HBCUs forgiving student loans and things like that, it's because we gave them that much money the most hbcus are the average getting about a billion dollars a year historically so for the last 30 or so years they received somewhere between 800 and a billion dollars a year we gave them 4.2 this year 1.6 of which was forgiving debt that they had that had nothing to do with COVID. the rest was to give them cash to survive COVID, and they're going to come out uh better than they went in but that's not our point. Our point is we have to make a institutional transformational investment in HBCUs because we know the products that they uh, produce. So the legislation got to Congress, slashed from six million to three and a half million, and who knows what it's going to be. We're going to continue to fight for it. Uh, but Congress decided that they wanted to change one or two of the formulas. They reduced uh, the amount uh, from that. Forty billion for all institutions, down to single digits for all those institutions. So, uh, our bold, ambitious commitment was scaled back, but it's still a historic commitment. We're fighting right now in Congress to get that number moved back up, and so that's just where it is. But we would never cut what HBCUs are receiving. That just, you know, that would be backwards on the values of this administration. Let's stay right there for a second. This this administration has given more money to HBCUs than any other administration, uh, including that over $4 billion pandemic relief that you just mentioned. But explain why taking care of our HBCUs are so important to the Biden administration. Because we know what it means. We know what at an HBCU, you're not just a number. At an HBCU, they're taking students, some of which were at exceptional high school, taking AP classes some of which are in underfunded public high schools that have all the potential in the world, but that have not had the, the push and the exposure to great professors in the college environment. And they take those diamonds, they sharpen them up, and they, I mean, they take that coal, sharpen it up, and turn, turn them into diamonds. We've always known the role, scope, and mission of HBCUs, but we see the product. Our EPA administrator is an HBCU grad. I'm an HBCU grad, the vice president of the United States, is an HBCU grad. So uh, I will tell you the truth. And, you know, I usually don't say bad stuff about Morehouse. But when I was at Morehouse, the science lab at Morehouse was worse than the science lab at my high school. And those are the types of things that we want to mm. fix. And, and we're also making those big tier one research institutions team up with HBCUs and minority serving institutions if they want to get grants from our administration because we want to build that capacity in the HBCU. So we have a comprehensive approach to how we're going to create a robust HBCU uh, community. And so we are excited about it. Uh, But, you know, there are those that are out there that want the discord in the black community wherever they can. 
And uh, this investment that we're making in HBCUs is the largest ever, and it's going to continue to be the largest ever. The only people we're competing against now is ourselves, and we plan to beat uh, our last historic investment. Wow. Now, Mr. Richmond, speaking about that discord, how can we continue to stop the spread of misinformation? There's so much misinformation out there on social media sites. So how do we verify information like this when we see other things on social media? Well, the White House has to get out there. But two, using uh, our black press, uh, NMPA, uh, African-American outlets, African-American owned outlets, uh, African-American shows to make sure that we are pushing out the true information. And those people who are going to believe the conspiracy theories are just going to uh, do that. But, you know, I come on a lot to try to make sure that people are aware of what we're doing. Like, I'm sure that a lot of people don't know that the president himself banned chokeholds, karate codes, and limited the use of no-knock warrants in all federal agencies, law enforcement agencies, because Congress couldn't get to a deal on the George Floyd Act. And so there are just a number of things that we're doing. Um, you know, and the downside is that the president and the vice president, keep they just keep their head down and keep working and they work through the noise. But we have to get out here and let people know exactly what the administration is doing, because we are doing some great things, specifically with equity and breaking down systemic racism in mind. Wow, man. Hey, listen, man, Cedric, thank you so much, man, for your time this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, y'all, please help me give it up for senior advisor uh, to President Joe Biden and the director of the White House Office of Public Engagement, Cedric Richmond. One time. Thank you, man. Thank you.